Hello, my name is Brian Wickman, here to present our work on preventing use after free attacks with fast forward allocation. I will be discussing how our prototype allocator, FFMALLOC, demonstrates that the long discarded idea of one time allocation can be a reasonable solution to use after free memory errors. Use after free is a common type of memory safety error. It is the result of erroneously accessing memory previously freed by the program. If the freed memory can be filled with attacker controlled values when reallocated, normal program execution can be subverted. In this code fragment, pointer P is dereferenced even though it was already freed. We refer to P as a dangling pointer. What happens in this case depends on the allocator's behavior. While the bug is apparent in this simple example, UAF bugs can be difficult to spot in real code. The free may occur far away from the use. Indeed, the call to free may not even be explicit in the code and instead be silently hidden away inside a call to realloc. On this slide, we can see how an attacker can make use of a UAF bug. An additional call to malloc has been added to the previous code fragment, as well as a read from a network connection. Because pointers P and Q have the same size, most allocators will reassign the slot freed by P to Q. Because Q points to attacker controllable data, P does as well. Therefore, if the final if statement guards a security sensitive section of code, the attacker is able to enter or avoid it as necessary. The use after free error type is well known and has been the subject of substantial research. A wide variety of proposed countermeasures have been published. Pointer invalidators attempt to find and neutralize dangling pointers. Custom compilers add runtime checks to verify the pointer is still valid. Meanwhile, secure allocators delay reusing free slots for a random interval. However, none of these diverse techniques has gained widespread acceptance. Most have added unacceptable CPU overhead or don't provide a strong enough guarantee to justify implementation and real world workloads outside of debugging tools. The simplest and most obvious UAF countermeasure is the one-time allocation principle. During a program's lifetime, no previously freed virtual address range should be reused for a new allocation. While this allocation policy cannot eliminate the bug in the application, it does make it impossible to exploit by the attacker. Here we see the same code fragment as before, but this time the allocator does not reassign Q to the same address as P. The program is still in error dereferencing P, but the results are no longer attacker controlled. If the virtual memory region for P is still valid, its contents are unchanged and the program proceeds as if the call to free never happened. Alternately, if the region for P was unmapped, a fault will occur and the program will terminate. However, despite its simplicity, this obvious solution has never been taken seriously. The criticisms were just as obvious that frequent slow memory mapping system calls would eat up CPU, that fragmented address space would waste memory, and small pointer widths would quickly use every possible address. With the advent of vast 64 bit address spaces, we believe that it is time to reevaluate this simple and effective technique. We will demonstrate that concerns surrounding CPU and memory overhead are manageable through careful system design. Our first OTA implementation was forward continuous malloc, which implemented a simple bump pointer scheme. In essence, each new allocation has a higher address than any previous one. New pages were mapped as necessary and pages were unmapped once all allocations containing that page were freed. As predicted, this first attempt suffered from unacceptable CPU and memory overhead. In particular, small but long lived allocations prevented freeing otherwise empty pages. Additionally, this solution has substantial memory fragmentation issues. Those same long lived allocations create islands in the virtual memory space tracked in virtual memory allocation structures in the Linux kernel. By default, an application is limited to 64,000 of these VMAs and exhaustion can prevent mapping or even unmapping additional address space. 
To address this, we added batch unmapping of pages so that a minimum run of pages needed to be freed before releasing. This significantly reduced CPU overhead as well as ameliorating the VMA exhaustion problem. Our second attempt at an OTA was the forward binning allocator, which only allocated memory in one of several fixed sizes, commonly referred to as a BBOP allocator. This model reduced VMA pressure in benchmark applications by co-locating small long loop allocations of the same size on the same set of pages. However, since allocations had to be rounded up to the next fixed size bin, there was additional memory pressure from this over allocation waste. Our final solution merges together ideas from FC Malik and FB Malik into a single allocator. For larger allocations, we utilize a bump pointer scheme to avoid over allocation waste. We also kept the batch page management routine and the minimum pages before release value is our main performance tuning value. Smaller allocations are allocated from fixed size bins. This keeps small allocations together, preventing small long-lived objects from holding up page release in the bump pointer region. We confirmed that FFMALIC prevents use after free exploitation by substituting it for glibc or other default allocator against a variety of known UAF susceptible binaries. For each binary, we first confirmed that our proof of concept attacks worked with the default allocator. Then we reran the attacks with FFMALIC. In every case, the attack failed when FFMALIC was the allocator. Several of our test cases are memory safe language runtimes. In theory, these languages should be immune to UAF or other memory safety errors. However, because the runtimes are C applications, they themselves are still susceptible. Note that even though PHP by default uses its own allocator and not glibc, it is still susceptible to UAF vulnerabilities. FFMALIC intentionally does not attempt to address other memory safety errors, such as heap overflows, in order to focus on testing the viability of OTA. However, its design does allow it to also detect invalid free and double free errors and terminate the application in keeping with glibc precedent. Our final allocator shows very good CPU performance compared to previous UAF mitigation proposals. On the spec CPU benchmark suite, FFMALIC added less than two and a half percent overhead to tests compared to glibc by geometric mean. These results and all following used eight as the threshold for releasing freed memory pages to the operating system. However, for the multi-threaded Parsec benchmarks, FFMALIC does add more significant CPU overhead, 22% by geometric mean across all tested benchmark and thread count combinations. While some slowdown is due to a small number of locks within the current design, much more significant is that each memory mapping system call contends for the global MMAP lock within the Linux kernel. Future kernel development to make this lock more granular could result in substantial performance gains for FFMALIC. Unfortunately, even with our careful system design, FFMALIC does still impose moderate memory overhead, falling in the middle of other anti-UAF proposals, coming in at 61% overhead for SPEC and 51% for SPAR, for Parsec. This is partially due to memory fragmentation and partially due to our batch page release mechanism. Memory overhead can be reduced somewhat by choosing to release pages more frequently at the cost of additional CPU consumption. We also tested FFMALIC on real world applications such as the Ingenix web server. During load testing, FFMALIC achieved comparable throughput values to other allocators across a variety of simultaneous connection and worker thread combinations. Memory overhead was less impressive, coming in at over five times glibc. However, this was the same as the performance-oriented FreeGuard and substantially better than the UAF-focused Marcus. Probabilistic approaches to UAF rely on randomness to make it less likely that an attacker can control the improperly reused memory region. 
However, if the flaw is network accessible, an attacker may be able to repeatedly trigger memory reallocation and thus force reuse of the target block. Further, this approach can be hard to reason about its overall security impact. As an extreme example, non-deterministic allocation may make other flaws such as buffer overruns worse by periodically providing the attacker opportunity to control memory adjacent to other blocks that would not otherwise be together when allocated in a deterministic manner. While other systems provide hard anti-UAF guarantees, they largely do so at a cost and complexity that shows in their runtime overhead. Some of these approaches are based on compiler modifications and thus cannot retroactively fix deployed code and may not provide complete protection until all linked libraries are also recompiled. By contrast, FFMALIC provides a drop-in replacement for glibc malloc that doesn't require recompilation, a hard security guarantee that it's easy to reason about and can often do so with little impact to execution speed. With a substantial amount of code written in memory unsafe languages like C still critical to modern computing, memory safety errors like use after free remain a significant security threat. One-time allocation is the obvious and straightforward solution to use after free, but it has been dismissed as impractical for too long. While there are obvious pitfalls to be avoided, we believe that our work on FFMALIC shows that one-time allocation should be looked at again as a viable anti-use after free technique. The code for FFMALIC is available for download on GitHub. And if you have any questions, please email me at the address on screen. Thank you very much.